Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, refers to a group of related chronic neurobiologic disorders characterized by deficits in a child's ability to regulate activity level, that's hyperactivity, inhibit behavior, that's impulsiveness, and attend to tasks, that's inattention, in ways appropriate for age and developmental stage. ADHD can affect every aspect of the child's life, including home and school, and within family and peer relationships. These children are unable to sit still or pay attention in class and subsequently experience the negative consequences of such behavior. They experience rejection by adults and peers, and in response, typically engage in a broad array of maladaptive behaviors. Repeated exposure to negative feedback adversely affects development of self-concept. ADHD has long-term adverse effects on academic performance, vocational success, and social-emotional development. As they grow older, children who have ADHD that have not been treated, in combination with conduct disorders, often engage in drug abuse and antisocial behavior. For many, the negative impact of ADHD continues on into adulthood. ADHD is the most commonly diagnosed disorder of childhood, affecting approximately 3 to 5 percent of school-aged children. ADHD is six times more common in boys than in girls. Research indicates a possible familial tendency for ADHD, implying there may be a genetic influence. Typically, the child with ADHD has at least one close relative who also has ADHD. About one-third of all fathers who had ADHD in childhood have children who have ADHD, and when one twin of an identical twin pair has the disorder, the other is likely to have it too. ADHD is associated with other problems, such as learning disabilities and language, conduct, oppositional defiant, mood, tick, and anxiety disorders. Also common are deficits in the areas of memory, cognitive processing, sequencing, motor skills, social skills, modulation of emotional response, and response to discipline. Sleep disorders are also common in children who have ADHD. So what causes ADHD? While it was once believed that ADHD was the result of some type of brain damage, it is now known that the brain structure of children who have ADHD is normal, but there are abnormalities in brain chemistry. These abnormalities affect key areas in the brain responsible for organizing thought. ADHD is not caused by bad parenting, but a disorganized home life and school environment can exacerbate the symptoms. ADHD is not caused by a diet that contains too much sugar, too little sugar, or aspartame. There are no causal relationship between ADHD and food additives, food colorings, food allergies, or other allergies, or a lack of vitamins, nor too much TV, fluorescent lighting, or video games. What are the symptoms of ADHD? Inattention. Typically, the child will have a hard time concentrating on one thing and may get bored with a task within a few minutes. Focusing conscious, deliberate attention on organizing and completing routine tasks may be difficult. Hyperactivity. This is a child who always seems to be in motion and can't sit still. The child may dash around or talk incessantly, roam around the room, squirm, wiggle his feet, touch everything, or noisily tap a pencil. Sitting still through a lesson can be an impossible task. The child feels intense restlessness. Impulsivity. The child seems unable to curve immediate reactions or think before acting. As a result, he may blurt out answers to a question, make inappropriate comments, or run into the street without looking. Impulsivity makes it hard for the child to wait for things or take turns in games. He may snatch a toy from another child or hit others when he gets upset. Other related behavior includes careless work habits, poor listening skills, engaging in dangerous activities, poor organizational skills, poor handwriting skills, and losing things he needs for school, activities, or other tasks. To be considered symptoms of ADHD, these manifestations cannot be related to other learning or mental disorders. It is important to remember that children who have ADHD are usually of average or above average intelligence. The diagnosis of ADHD is based on history and on observation of the child's behavior in his usual settings. The process of making a diagnosis should include input from parents and teachers. The central components of a thorough history include the presenting symptoms, differential diagnosis, and possible related conditions, as well as medical, developmental, 
school, psychosocial, and family histories. It is helpful to identify the events that precipitated the request for evaluation. Also, it is important to ascertain which approaches have been used in the past. It is important that symptoms of ADHD are evident in two different settings, not just in school or just at home. This is a key element in diagnosis. Boys are typically diagnosed by age 7 and girls by age 9. There is no independent diagnostic test for ADHD. This is not unique to ADHD, but applies to most psychiatric disorders, including schizophrenia and autism. While most individuals have symptoms of both inattention and hyperactivity impulsivity, there are some individuals in whom one or the other predominates. The treatment for ADHD is multifaceted. Many parents will have tried nutritional approaches, such as eliminating sugar from the diet, before seeking medical attention. One variation of this is the ketogenic diet, although most often this type of diet is associated with attempting to reduce or control seizure disorders. Nevertheless, there are no well-established nutritional interventions that have consistently proved effective in easing ADHD symptoms. And in fact, delaying the implementation of well-established effective interventions in favor of the search for unknown, generally unproven allergens is likely to be harmful. Treatment includes behavioral interventions like psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, social skills training, support groups, and parent and educator skills training. Environmental manipulation is a useful option. The child's environment can be simplified by reducing external distractions, reducing alternatives, maintaining consistency in routines related to sleeping, eating, working, and playing, and rewarding the child for desired patterns of behavior. Children who have ADHD benefit from a predictable environment and need firm, reasonable limits. Psychostimulant medications such as methylphenidate, trade name Ritalin, and amphetamines such as Adderall are the most widely researched and commonly prescribed drugs for ADHD. They alleviate symptoms, especially when combined with intensive behavioral interventions. The usual dosage range for Ritalin is 5 to 20 milligrams, 2 to 3 times a day. The amphetamine dose is one-half the methylphenidate dose. Dosage requirements do not always correlate with weight, age, or severity of symptoms in an individual child. Dosages might have to be increased during childhood due to increased lean body weight. Conversely, decreased dosages may be necessary after puberty. Antidepressant medications may also be used as an additional or alternative treatment for children who respond poorly to stimulants develop unacceptable side effects, or have tics, anxiety, or mood disorders. Tricyclic antidepressants have shown clinical efficacy in 60 to 70 percent of children who have ADHD. Adomoxetine, trade name Stratera, is a norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor now available in the United States. It increases the availability of norepinephrine, which is thought to be essential in regulating impulse control, organization, and attention. Stratera is the first FDA-approved treatment for ADHD that is not a stimulant and is not a controlled substance. While medications are beneficial in most cases, medications alone are not necessarily the best strategy for many children. Children also have anxiety, stressful home circumstances, or social skill deficits over and above the symptoms of ADHD seem to do better with combination therapy. Treatment might have to continue for a long period of time. Parents often choose to discontinue medication even when benefits have been demonstrated, perhaps because they see the improvements in the child's behavior and think they no longer need the medication, which brings us to your role. Family education is absolutely essential. Teach parenting skills, techniques for behavior modification, such as reinforcing positive behavior, and the appropriate use of the medications, their correct dosages, and their side effects. They include insomnia, increased blood pressure, nervousness, and anorexia. These effects develop early in treatment and usually subside over time. While there can be negative effects on growth rate, the child's eventual adult height does not seem to be affected. You'd also assist with developmental screening or psychological testing, assess and document observed behavior, praise appropriate behavior, and emphasize strategies that promote the child's self-esteem.